This is our failure analysis lab. So mostly what they showed you in the video is what happens when everything is going right. You know, talking about testing everything, getting, getting everything tested so we can ship the good products to the, to the customers. Sometimes things don't go right and we have failures, so this is a failure analysis lab. Um, whether it is you know, new product that we're bringing up, which we'll call new silicon, when it comes in and it's packaged, or their reliability failures, or their customer returns. When those failures happen, we'll look at a, a sample of them and do analysis and find out what is the, this is part of the failure analysis lab, we call it the mechanical room, we'll do all of our mechanical deprocessing of the part. We physically deprocess, delayer the part uh, by grinding or cross-sectioning so that we get to the, the location on the die or in the package that caused the failure and we'll identify that failure mechanism. If, if the parts come in, it's a new design, maybe there's something with the design that doesn't work, the designers will be able to identify through the testing that's done on the test floor the suspect circuits. In the old, you know, years, years and years past, when there was a design flaw in your silicon, it could take weeks, as you saw in the video they mentioned, it could take up to 18 weeks or so to get a design fix through the fabrication process and back out so you can test it. Well, here, with these tools focused on beam tools, we can do that in a matter of days. Say two days, we get the part prepped into the tool, we do the, um, the circuit edit, get the part out, and they can test it and validate what that. What do you have to do? Re remove bits and add bits as well? Add bits. Well, actually, it uses a ion beam to mill into the circuit. We can cut, so we cut off a circuit, uh, we can reroute it to a different location. We can tie a signal high, we can tie a signal low, whatever, whatever it needs to be, so that we can adjust that. Now, after that, the whole part may not work, but for that portion of the, of the test that we're interested in, and just debugging that circuit, we can, we can prove that out. And then, you know, maybe they need to add some more elements in the design to really make the whole system work. These, uh, these operations using these tools you know, with the small geometries we're using at 45 nanometer, 28 nanometer, um, these operations are extremely vibration sensitive. So at the threshold for the door there, um, the concrete is actually cut but all along these rooms. This concrete is isolated from the rest of the building to help minimize those vibrations. And also, you know, just vibrations from the road and, well, we are in Southern California, and we do have we do have earthquakes. Um, luckily, in San Diego, the earthquakes are milder than they are, say, up in Los Angeles or in San Francisco. But we still have them. <laughs> Yeah, we'll, we'll do stutter analysis on all, of, all those products here. This, uh, this tool here, this tool will help us identify in the silicon where the failure actually is. This tool is a scanning optical microscope. It will use a laser to scan across the silicon, which we would have previously exposed. We scan across the silicon, and if there is, say, a short somewhere, you wouldn't know where it is until, as the laser scans across, it's locally heating, it's going to change the conductivity there, and it'll drop more or less current. This tool will sense that and show us where that location is. So that then we can go through and, uh, as I mentioned in the other room, we can deprocess and find the, the physical mechanism that caused the, the, the failure to occur. So, so 
But this one is is not exactly set up for circuit edit. Is more set up to do cross sections. So instead of using a uh, polisher grinder to do a large area, in this tool we can do a very small, very precise cross section. We can also use it for some elemental analysis and we can also use it for some uh, probing. We have some probes that can go inside of the chamber. In this room that we're just going by, the one I'll fit in there, but it is a laser chemical etcher. It assists in the focused ion beam circuit edit operation. Uh, this poster is a good, uh, gives a good description of what's going on. This is actually a cross-sectional view of a device and the silicon guide. This is the substrate of the, of the board. This was cross-sectioned in after this trench was made. So what we'll do is we'll use this laser chemical etcher to make this trench in the silicon. And we'll stop when there is about five or 10 microns of silicon remaining. The trench will be made over the area where we want to do the fib circuit edit. We're going to take this part and take it into the focused ion beam, take it into that tool, and finish the circuit edit. This operation takes maybe an hour or so to do this. Hours? Yeah, one or two hours. If we try to trench out all of this using the, the focused ion beam tool, it could take over a day. So, this operation was a large bottleneck, so with this tool, we're able to trench out a large section of silicon to enable us to do standard x-ray imaging every one third of the degree. The software will build up that so we have some volume to look at, and we have a process to build the solder points and the same way the solder points over the gold bond wires that connect into the silicon die. We don't see the silicon because silicon is transparent to x-rays. Here we can see two bond wires for touching. Right? So that would be that would be causing a failure. So all this we can do relatively non-destructively. To get these images as good and crisp as they need to be, we need to get the sample very close to the x-ray source, in which case sometimes we'll, we'll need to actually cut the sample down. come in, they're going to be checked in, and then they're going to bring them here and put the parts in the VLM. I think there's about a million parts right now in the VLM. So you can do it several ways. You can select from your actual parts. What I'm going to do is just bring a pan down. So if you're an engineer, you know where your parts are. Let's say they're in pan 15. You enter that pan, and it's going to bring that pan down. Then 
um, engineer or technician can come over, grab whatever parts they like. There is an RF uh, reader in here. These are will read the parts. So once they pull them out, uh, they can come over here and say, um, confirm my parts, and it'll say what parts you have. And you just have to verify that it's accurate. They'll say yes, those are the parts I have, and then they'll go in. If it's around, if it's in the air, which happens on occasion, um, all they have to do is do a quick correction, and then they'll go through. So why is it so important So what happens is when we didn't have it, all the parts were on the test floor. Yeah. So the engineers would keep on the test floor and it just became the so at the end of the day, hopefully the one takeaway you guys would have with this, this very large test floor with all these noisy instruments is it is really is focused on giving, you know, hopefully you as a potential customer of Qualcomm or user of our devices, maximum experience possible. You know, if it's a video you're watching, hopefully the video quality is the best quality it could be. Maybe it's the voice quality or the audio of a phone call or music you're playing the best quality it could be. And because of all these things are put in the play, make sure whether it's the hottest of hot conditions or the coldest of cold conditions. People always ask, well, why do you test at um, 120 degrees, you know, say plus 85 or somewhere spec? You test all the way up to 120. Well, if you have a, you know, say a GPS device and your car is out in the, the desert and it's extremely hot, it still has to work. Even though you're not making a phone call, hopefully you're inside and staying cool. Maybe it's in the, the extreme cold.